everyone, I am Danushke Hittiarachi and an international language instructor. In this video, I am going to present this short story, Every Day Used by Alice Walker. In my the previous video the clips, I made a biography of Alice Walker. Then you can watch that the video, the clip also, to get the better understanding of a great writer, Alice Walker. So please be the kind enough to subscribe to the channel ml and click on the bell icon to get the latest videos soon. Now you can listen to the short story every day used by Alice Walker. Every day used by Alice Walker. I will wait for her in the yard that Maggie and I made so clean and wavy yesterday afternoon. A yard like this is more comfortable than the most people know. It is not just a yard, it is like an extended living room. When the hard clay is the swept clean as a floor and the fine sand around the edges lined with the tiny irregular grooves, anyone can come and sit and look up into the elm tree and wait for the breezes that never come inside the house. Maggie will be nervous until after her sister goes. She will stand hopelessly in concerns, homely and ashamed of the burnies cast down her arms and legs, eyeing her sister with a mixture of envy and awe. She thinks that her sister has the healthy life the always in the palm of one hand that no is a word the world never learned to say to her. You have no doubt seen those the TV shows the where the child who has the made it is confronted as a surprise by her own mother and father tottering in weakly from the backstage. A pleasant surprise of course what would they do if parent and child came on the show only to curse out and insult each other on tv the mother and child embraced and smiled into each other's faces sometimes the mother and the father weep the child wraps them in her arms and leans across the table to tell how she would not have made it without their help. I have seen these programs. Sometimes I dream a dream in which Dee and I are suddenly brought together on a TV program of this sort. Out of a dark and soft-seated limousine, I am ushered into a bright room, the field with many people. There I meet a smiling, grey, sporty man like the Johnny Carson who shakes my hand and tells me what a fine girl I have. Then we are on the stage and Dee is embracing me with tears in her eyes. She pins on my dress a large orchid even though she has the told me once that she thinks the orchids are tacky flowers. In real life I am a large big boned woman with rough the man the working hands. In the winter I wear flannel nightgowns to bed and overalls the during the day. I can kill and clean a hog as the mercilessly as a man. My fat keeps me hot in zero weather. I can work outside all day, breaking ice to get water for washing. I can eat pork liver cooked over the open fire minutes after it comes the steaming 
from the hog one winter i knocked a bull calf straight in the brain between the eyes with a sledge hammer and had the meat hung up to chill before night fall but of course all this does the not show on television i am the way my daughter would want me to be a hundred pounds the lighter my skin like an uncooked barley pancake my hair glistens in the hot bright lights johnny carson has much to do to keep up the with my the quick and witty tongue but that is a mistake i know even before i wake up whoever knew a johnson with a quick tongue who can even imagine me looking a strange the white man in the eye it seems to me i have talked to them always to win one foot to raise the in flight with my the head filmed in whichever way is farthest from them d though she would always the look at anyone in the eye hesitation was the no part of her nature how do i look mama maggie says showing just enough of her thin body enveloped in pink skirt and a red blouse for me to know she is there almost hidden by the door come out into the yard i say have you ever seen a lame animal perhaps a dog run over by some careless person rich enough to own a car sidle up to someone who is ignorant enough to be kind to him that is the way my maggie walks she has been like this chin on chest eyes on ground feet in shuffle ever since the fire that burned the other house to the ground d is the lighter than maggie with the nicer hair and a fuller figure she is a woman now though sometimes i forget how long ago was it that the other house burned 10 12 years sometimes i can still hear the flames and feel the maggie's the arms sticking to me her hair smoking and her dress the falling off her in the little black the paper reflects her eyes seem the stretched the open blazed the opened by the flames that reflected in them and d i see her standing off under the sweet gum tree she used to dig gum out of a look of concentration on her face as she watched the last dig uh, dingy gray board of the house to fall into it the red hot brick chimney why don't you do a dance around the ashes i wanted to ask her she had hated the house that much i used to think she hated maggie too but that was the before we raised the money the church and me to send her to augusta to school she used to read to us the without pity forcing words lies the other folks the habits the whole lives upon us too sitting trapped and ignorant underneath her voice she washed us the inner river of make believe burned us with a lot of knowledge we didn't necess- necessarily need to know 
praised the us to her with the serious the way she read to so, uh, show us away at just the moment like dim wits we seemed about to understand they wanted nice things a yellow organ dress to wear to her the graduation from high school black pumps to match a green the suit she made uh, from an old suit somebody gave me she was determined to stare down any disaster in her efforts her eyelids would not flicker for minutes at a time often i fought of the temptation to shake her at 16 she had the style of her own and knew what style was i never had an education myself after second grade the school was closed down don't ask me why in 1927 called as the fever questions that then they do now sometimes the maggie reads to me she stabbles the along good naturally but can't see well she knows that she is not bright like the good looks and money quickness passes her by she will marry john thomas who has the mossy teeth in an earnest face and then i will be free to sit here and i guess just to sing church songs to myself although i never was a good singer never could carry a tune i was always better at a man's job i used to love to milk till i was hooked in the side in 49 cows are soothing and slow and don't bother you unless you try to milk them the wrong way i have deliberately the turn my the back on the house it is the three rooms just like the one that burned except the roof is tin they don't make shingle roofs there anymore there are no real windows just some the holes the cut in the sides like the pot holes in a ship but not round and not a square with the raw hide holding the shutters the up on the outside this house is in a pasture too like the other one no doubt when d sees it she will want to tear it down she wrote me once that no matter where we choose to live she will manage to come see us but she will never bring her friends maggie and i thought about this and maggie asks me mama when did the ever have any friends she had a few 30 boys in pink shirts hanging about on wash day after school nose girls the who never laughed impressed with her they the worship the well turned phrase the cute shape the scald in humor that erupted like the bubbles in lie she read to them when she was courting jimmy t she didn't have the much time to pay to us but turned all her fault finding power on him he flew to marry a cheap city girl from a family of ignorant flashy people she hardly had time to 
recompose herself. When she comes, I will meet, but there they are. Maggie attempts to make a dash for the house in her shuffling way, but I stay her with my hand. Come back here, I say, and she stops and tries to dig a well in the sand with her top. It is hard to see them clearly through the strong sun, but even the first glimpse of a leg out of the car tells me it is D. Her feet were always the need to look in as if God himself had shaped them with a certain style. From the other side of the car comes a short, stocky man. He is all over his head, a foot long and hanging from his chin like a kinky mule tail. I hear Maggie the suck in her breath. Oh, is the what it sounds like. Like when you see the wriggling in the office snake just in front of your foot on the road. Oh. D next. A dress down to the ground in this the hot weather. A dress so loud it hurts my eyes. There are yellows and oranges enough to throw back the light of the sun. I feel my all face the warm in the from the heat waves the it throws out earrings to gold and hanging down to her shoulders bracelets dangling and making noises when she moves her arm up to shake the folds of the dress out of her armpits the dress is um, loose and flows and as she walks closer I like it I hear Maggie go oh, again it is her sister's hair it stands straight up like the wool on a sheep it is black as night and around the edges are two long pigtails that robbed about like a small lizards disappearing behind her ears. Wa Zuzo Tiano, she says, coming on in that gliding way the dress that dress makes her move. The short, stocky the fellow with the hair to his the navel is old grinning and he follows up the with the my mother and sister he moves to hug Maggie but she falls back right up against the back of my hair chair I feel her trembling there and when I look up I see the perspiration the falling of her chin don't get wet don't get up says D since I am stout it takes the something of a push you can see me trying to move a second or two before I make it she turns showing white heels through her sandals and goes back to the car out she peeks the next with a polaroid she stoops down quickly and lines up the picture after picture of me sitting there in front of the house with maggie covering behind me she never takes a shot without making sure the house is included 
when a cow comes the nibbling the, around the edge of the yard she snaps it and me and Maggie and the house then she puts the Polaroid in the back seat of the car and comes up and kisses me on the forehead meanwhile Assalamualaikum is the going the through motions the with the Maggie's the hand Maggie's the hand is as the limp as a fish and probably as the call despite the sweat and she keeps trying to pull it back it looks like Assalamualaikum the wants to shake hands the but uh, wants to do it fancy or maybe he don't know how the people they shake hands the anyhow he soon gives the up the on the maggi well i say d no mama she says not d wangaro li vanika kemanjo what happened today I wanted to know she's dead. Wangaroo said, I couldn't bear it any longer being named after the people who oppress me. You know as well as me, you was named after your aunt Dissy. I said Dissy is my sister. She named D. We called her Big D. after d was born but who was she named after ask wangaru i guess after grandma d i said and who was she named after ask wangaru her mother i said and so wangaru was getting tired that is about as far back as i can trace it i said though in fact i probably could have the carried it back beyond the civil war through the branches well say the assalam alaikum there you are mm, i heard maggie say there i was not i said it before this cropped up in our family so why should i try to trace it that far back He just stood there grinning, looking down on me like somebody inspecting a model, a car. Every once in a while he and Wangaroo sent eye signals over my head. How do you pronounce this name? I asked. You don't have to call me by it if you don't want to, said Wangaro. Why shouldn't I? I asked. If that is what you want us to call you, we will call you. I know it might sound awkward at first, said Wangaro. I will get used to it, I said. Rim it out again. Well, soon we got the name out of the way. Assalamu alaikum had a name twice as the long and three times as hard. After I tripped over it two or three times, he told me to just call him Hakim Baba. I wanted to ask him the was he a baba. but i didn't really think he was so i didn't ask you must belong to those the beef the cattle peoples the down the road i say they say the assalam alaikum when they met you too but they didn't shake hands always the two busy feeding the cattle fixing the fences putting up the salt lick shelters a uh, throwing down hay when the white folks the p- 
poison the sum of the herd. The men stayed up the all night with the rifles in their hands. I walked a mile and a half just to see the sight. Hakim Ababa said, I accept some of their doctrines, but farming and raising the cattle is not my style. They didn't tell me and I didn't ask the whether Wangaroo D had really gone and married him. We sat down to eat and right away he said he didn't eat collards and the pork was unclean. Wangaroo though went on through the chitlins and the corn bread, the greens and everything else. She talked a blue streak over the sweet potatoes, everything delighted her. Even the fact that we still used the benches her daddy made for the table when we couldn't afford to buy chairs. Oh, mama, she cried. Then the turn to Hakim Baba. I never knew how lovely these benches are. You can feel the rump, the prince, she said, running her hands underneath her and along the bench. Then she gave a sigh and her hand closed over Grandma D's the butter dish. That is it, she said. I knew there was something I wanted to ask you if I could have. Um, she jumped up the, from the table and went over in the corner where the churn stood. The milk in it crabbed by now. She looked at the churn and looked at it. This the churn top is what I need. She said, didn't Uncle Bardi whittle it out of a tree you all used to have? Yes, I said. Hmm. She said happily. And I wanted Dasher too. Uncle Bardi whittled that too? Asked the barber. The Wangaroo looked up at me. And this the first husband whittled the dash, said the Maggie. So, lo, you almost couldn't hear her. His name was Henry, but they called him Stash. Maggie's the brain is like an elephant's, Wangaroo said, laughing. I can use the chewed top as a centerpiece for the alcove table. She said, sliding the plate over the chute, and I will think of something artistic to do with the dasher. When she finished wrapping the dasher, the handle stuck out. I took it for a moment in my hands. So you didn't even have to look close to see whether the way the hands the pushing the dash the up and down to make the butter had left a kind of a sink in the wood. In fact, there were a lot of small sinks that you could see where thumbs and fingers had sunk into the wood. It was beautiful light yellow wood from a tree that grew in the yard where the big D and Stash had lived. After dinner, D. Wangaroo went to the trunk at the foot of my bed and started riffling through it. Maggie hung back in the kitchen over the dishpan. Out came the Wangaroo with the two quills. They 
had been pieced by Grandma D and then a big D and me had hung them on the quilt frames on the front porch and quilted them. One was in the lone stacked pattern. The other was the walk around the mountain. In both, in both of them were scraps of dresses. Grandma G had worn the 50 and more years ago. Bits and pieces of grandma, uh, jackets, bracelets, shirts, and one the teeny faded blue piece about the size of a penny matchbox that was from the great grandpa Israel's uniform that he wore in the Civil War. Mama Wangaroo said, Sweet as a bird, can I have these all quills? I heard something to fall in the kitchen and a minute later the kitchen door slammed. Why don't you take one or two of the others? I asked. These all things was just done by me and Big D from some tops that your grandma pieced before she died. No, said Wangaroo, I don't want those. They are stitched around the bodies by machine. That will make them the last better, I said. That is not the point, said Wangaroo. These are all pieces of dresses grandma used to wear. She did all this stitching by hand. Imagine she held the quills securely in her arms, struck in there. Some of the pieces, the like the those the lavender ones, come from the old clothes her mother handed down to her. I said, moving up to touch the quills, the Wangaroo moved back just enough so that I couldn't reach the quills. They already belong to her. Imagine she breathed again, clutching them closely to her bosom. The Truth is, I said, I promised to give them quills to Maggie for when she marries the John Thomas. She gasped like a bee had stung her. Maggie can't appreciate these quills that she said. She would probably be backward enough to put them to everyday use. I reckon she would, I said. God knows I've been saving them the for long enough to with nobody using them. I hope she will. I didn't want to bring up the how I had offered the Wangaroo a quilt when she went away to college. Then she had the tall they were old fashioned out of style. But they are priceless, she was saying now furiously, for she has a temper. Maggie would put them on the bed and in the five years they would be in ranks less than that. She can always make some more, I say the Maggie knows how to quilt. D. Wangaroo looked at me with hatred. You just will not understand. The point is they are quills, these quills. Well, I said stumped. What would you do with them? Hang them, she said, as if that was the only thing 
you could do with quills Maggie by now was standing in the door i could almost hear the sound her feet made as they scrambled over each other she can have the mama she said like the somebody used to never winning anything or having anything is out for her i can remember grandma de without the quills i looked at her hard she had filled her bottom lip with checkerberry snuff and gave her face a kind of dope hang da look it was grandma d and the big d who taught her how to quilt herself she stood there with a scared hands hidden in the folds of her skirt she looked at her sister with something like the fear that but she wasn't mad at her this was maggie's portion this was the way she knew god to work when i looked at her like that uh, something hit me in the top of my head and ran down to the soles of my feet just like the when i am in church and the spirit of god touches me and i get happy and shout i did something i never done before hugged maggie to me then dragged her on into the room snatch the quills the out of mr vanderos the hand and jumped them into dumped them into maggie's lap maggie just sat there on my bed with her mouth open take one or two of the others i said to d but she turned without a word and went out to hakim ababa you just don't understand she said as maggie and i came out to the car what don't i understand i wanted to know your hair your heritage she said and then she turned to maggie kissed her and said you ought to try to make the something of yourself to maggie it is really a new day either for you but from the way you and the mama still live you would never know it she put on uh, some sunglasses that hid everything about the tip of her nose and chin maggie smiled maybe at the sunglasses but a real smile not a scared after we watch the car does the settle i asked the maggie to bring me a dip of snuff and then the two of us sat there just enjoying until it was the time to go in the house and go to bed